if there's one thing in abundance in the USF Pro Championships, it's storylines. With over 60 drivers set to roll for the 2024 campaign, we have a ton of stories to talk about throughout the season. Hello folks, my name's Rob Howden, the voice of the USF Pro Championships presented by Continental Tire. And today we're gonna look at one of those storylines, one of the most impressive that spans four generations and essentially about six decades. Joining today from now Comet Racing is Logan Adams. Logan, great to have you here on the show. Thanks Rob, good to be here. It is wild to talk about it, isn't it? Uh, so uh, Logan is part of a family that goes all the way back to your, your great grandfather, Emerson Dismore, who started Comet Kart Sales, one of the longest tenured karting shops uh, in the country. But we also go back to your grandfather as well, Mark Dismore, who uh, an IRL uh, winner, an Indy Racing League winner, a Daytona 24 winner. So the pedigree there, and that's your grandpa on the sidelines watching all, all, all year long. Talk about uh, you getting into racing. What was it that drove you into it? I know that the family's had the kart track. Yeah, what so drove we, you? We've always had the kart track, um, and that obviously helped with getting me into the sport. Um, I always grew up around it, always watched it, always saw other people doing it. Um, and I always had a feeling that I wanted to be one of those guys. So I always thought it was super cool. Always thought it would be a blast to do. Um, so I. Uh, turned five years old, was old enough to get into a kid cart. Um, we got uh, we got one. The track's sitting right there. For yeah, you, right? exactly. Yeah. So uh, we we took advantage of the situation. We got into a kid cart, um, and it was it was I liked it, um, but I kind of took a break from it um, from five to seven years old. Okay. And I, I did baseball, basketball, and football, um, and then realized that okay, that, that's enough of the school sports. And I went back to the uh, go-karting and at that point I was in the uh, Yamaha Sportsman, so. What's so amazing about it is uh, obviously Newcastle Motorsports Park is the track. There's probably not another driver in our entire paddock that's more immersed in racing or has been than you are, right? You're, you know, your grandfather built the track back in 2004, so it's uh, rolling into its 20th season. It's really the track that we have the biggest races of the year, all the major national championships, Supercarts, USA Pro Tour, USPKS, all the, all the right series that all the carters have been to yeah. all come to Newcastle. But the crazy thing about it is obviously, you know, I was talking to your dad, Mike Adams, uh, and about how you were there with, as a kid, two, three years, four years of age. And it's, it's you've grown up there, like you said, you've, you, and you work there. One of the things I want to say, it's what's interesting is, it's not like you're there, you're spoon fed. Anytime ever a big race, you're out there working. You're, you're cleaning garbage pails. Like you, you, they put you to work there. Yeah, yeah. So most of the time, uh, I don't get the luxury of racing. That's it. I, I get to practice throughout the week, yeah. but during the during the weekend, we need all hands on deck. So I'm uh, I'm doing the trash cans and cleaning bathrooms. So was were that time obviously you know you knew you were going to get to race. You know that Grandpa or Dad was going to push you into, the, into a cart sooner or later. Was, did you try to get away? Was that the sports, playing to play baseball and such? Like maybe, well, maybe this isn't my thing. Yeah, I mean, I just uh, was always told that th this was a good idea, this is what you'll like. Yep. Um, and so I, I wanted to try something else and then, and then I came to the realization that this is what I like, this is what I want to do, so. It would have to be a little bit about the track, uh, Newcastle, again, that, that core track where drivers like the Joseph Newgardens and the Connor Daly's kind of called home, that you could see so many people coming through. I, I have to believe that, let's talk about the fire for you to potentially become a car racer as opposed to just a carter. Was it partly because watching all these drivers come through this track that was your second home kind of thing? Yeah, we still have we still have IndyCar drivers that come out and just, just practice. They just, just turn laps on a Tuesday or Wednesday. So um, just watching those guys, you just see them and you think, wow, wouldn't that, wouldn't that be an awesome life? to go and drive go-karts throughout the week and then go drive Indy cars on the weekend, so. And it's interesting because all these drivers have done those US USPKS races, the Scusa Pro Tours, right? That's where they honed their skills. Like you said, you didn't really get a chance to do that because when they come to your track, you gotta work. You're, you know, you're, you're the family working on, in the family business. So where did, where did you kind of make that switch where, man, you know what, dad, grandpa, this is what I wanna do. I wanna go racing cars. So I got tired of the got tired of the school sports, yeah. um, and I was always a corner worker, always pushing go karts back on after they spin yeah. out. I see you um, do many times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if you stand there long enough, you just start to watch and you pay attention. Um, you see where they turn in, you see where they break. You you just you pick up on the little stuff, and I felt like that looks like a lot of fun. You see you see the hand movements, you see them trying to dance throughout the corner, yeah. and it's just yeah, I, I saw that, and it progressively got more and more of a fire that I wanted to do. So eventually you, you went into the F4 program for a little bit, you did some F4 racing. We saw you last year, you kind of debuted with us in USF 2000 at Mid-Ohio, and then that big run. You got into a couple incidents at Mid-Ohio, but that podium run in Toronto, that must have felt hugely satisfying to be able to you know, show what you had in tough conditions. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a game changer. Um, that, yeah, I can't even put it into words how, how I felt after that race. Uh, it was just complete 
happiness, honestly. You just, you're going for that. You, you, that's what you're hoping yeah. for the whole time. And then to go onto a street course for your first time and then pull the podium, it, it was amazing. So the interesting thing too is, your, so your dad, you kind of skip a generation of driving. Your dad, Mike, runs Newcastle Motorsports Park. Your mom obviously is well there. Everybody's running with the racer's grill, everything you have there. So. The cool thing is it kind of falls back on grandpa, right? right? Mark Dismore, he's the man, right? He's the guy that's on the sidelines for you, essentially your driver coach. And, and how's that work? Because, you know, sometimes a driver coach will yell at you, right? Yeah. And I, I, I'm sure, I know your dad, your, your grandpa really well. What's that like having your grandpa be the guy that's kind of in your ear and chirping at you? Uh, you know, he's an, he's an aggressive man. He's to the point. Um, he's yep. got the headset on and he rides around on his, on his electric bike and yep. uh, he'll go to, corner four and say, you need to turn in earlier. You need to, you need to turn in later, break deeper, break earlier. And he, he'll go around and he'll tell me these things as I'm out there. So I go, I can try it on this lap. And then the next lap he informs me and I can try it. And, and it's, it's not like you have to come in and then you have to, you have to look at data. You have to watch yeah. video. It's com he, he never grew up with that. He didn't have that. He would, he would go out and he'd watch those guys and he'd see what they were doing compared to what he was doing. And he spent time with your uncle as well. His son, Mark Jr. Right. Yeah. Did, did some racing as well. Now here you are the next generation. So the interesting thing for you, this is why it's such a cool storyline. You guys are going to kind of do your own program. It's kind of a family deal and that's big in karting. We know that there, there's a lot of family deals in karting, but you guys are essentially going to run your own program in the USF Pro 2000 category this year. Uh, through the off season, you've been, you've been strong, getting up to speed in the new Continental tires. Tell me how that program has come together and who are the key people involved for you for 2024? Um, well, we obviously have Brad Brewer. He's the uh, engineer mechanic. He works on the entire car. He, he gets that thing in tip top shape for me. Um, and I, obviously grandpa, he, he is the number one yeah. supporter um, and he's driver coach. He does, he does everything else behind the scenes. Um, my father, he, he takes care of getting the parts. He That's takes it. care of everything else like that. Um, and then mom's obviously just number right one there. supporter. Now well, let's talk about Brad. The interesting thing again is it's another layer of this is Brad Brewer was with your dad, I believe at Kelly Racing. Yeah, uh, so, so he was he was with Grandpa, um, not on oh, his Grandpa, car. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't on his car. He was on his teammate's car. Scott Sharp. Yep. And uh, so Amazing. so Grandpa would always break down, and I, I I asked him before we met Brad. I said, is he is he a good mechanic? Do you know him? And he said, uh, well, he was never on my car. I always saw him around, and my car always broke down, and Scott's never did. <laughs> so he obviously was better than the guys on mine. There's the pedigree. I love it. <laughs> All right. So it, the, the cool thing too is so you have. It's, it's interesting, you have these, these uh, let's say elder statesmen or people with so much experience, you gotta rely on a guy like Brad who's been around for so long. You can just literally probably just sit and just take all the information in. Yeah, he, we, he, I'll pull off the track, shut the car off, and he'll tell me, I'll tell him what I want changed, and he'll tell me what he's gonna do, and it, it, we're learning together, because he's never worked on these USF yeah. cars. He's only built, he, he can build an Indy car from the nose to the rear, um, <laughs> but he doesn't, he, he, this is his first time with these. So um, we're all learning. We knew it wouldn't be easy coming yeah. into it. Um, so we're making improvements as we go, taking big swings at it. Um, so what's, what's the goal? What are, what are the expectations for next year? What are you, is there a track you want to get back to? Or, well, let's just start with goals. What are your expectations? Uh, Toronto. I just, go? <laughs> a special spot in my heart for Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what about um, St. Petersburg, starting the season there? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, I've been watching some videos, so okay. so I'm, I'm excited to see what we can do there. Um, but going in with low expectations, we don't, we're not, we're not trying to go out there and win the first race yeah. of the year. We're going to, we're going to try and learn. Um, we don't have the advantages that the other teams have. They they were there last year. All that they, data. Yeah, they yeah. know how they set their car up. Yeah. We have no clue. We're going into it blind. So um, we're just, yeah, we're here to learn. Um, this year's all about making improvements, getting better. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just trying to trying to improve as a driver and as a team. Obviously the Dismore name so huge around Indianapolis, the track Newcastle just outside uh, east of Indianapolis. We have that race we go to at Indianapolis Raceway Park west of the city. Uh, your dad, of course, won the 1999 race in the IRL at Texas. He's going to be, on, I'm sure he'll be on the radio. He'll be your spotter on top of the stand there. What do you think about going to, to the Oval at IRP? Uh, so we were talking about that just the other day, actually. Okay. It's uh, it's a little nerve wracking um, because you see you see the uh, Oval and it's just intimidating. Yep. Um, that it, You get the, you got to carry the speed. You can't, can't break. You have to just lift and roll. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So you just, I'm, just trying to build my confidence, trying to get ready for it, um, and yeah, with Grandpa's help, I think we'll, I think we'll impress ourselves. You showed good speed last year at Mid Ohio, so there's your natural training road course. You've already got the podium at Toronto, and you're excited to get back there, which bodes well for potentially for you having some success at uh, at St. Petersburg. But then there's the Oval, that's the one that's out there. You're like, oh my God, I got, I got to challenge that as well. Because listen, we talked, you and I talked before the show about potentially going. You know, your eyes are set on Indy next. 
maybe IndyCar. All those are key, right? You've you got to be able to get a feel for that. Yeah, um, so obviously you go into the N NXT and you go into IndyCar, there's a lot more ovals than there are with this. So you have to take advantage of the situation. When when you go test there as a rookie and get your license, you have to, you have to, yeah, you have to give it everything you can. Um, and then during the race, you can't you can't be a baby about it. You just gotta, <laughs> gotta get your nose in there. So, so true. Yeah. We, yeah, we're just we're gonna yeah take advantage of every time we're out on that track um, to improve for the future. You talk about being at the racetrack and being a corner worker at Newcastle or doing whatever you did, but you, you obviously you kind of you know kept an eye at the USF Pro Championships. That's where I want to get to. You know when you so you decided that. Was, was there a driver you watched in the program in years past? You're like, mm, you know what? I want to I want to emulate that driver. I want to follow that driver. I know you probably can get some access to guys like Joseph and, and Connor, who are you know good friends of the track and your family. So, was there was there a driver or a couple of drivers who were kind of your target? Well, I've always watched Joseph yeah. as a, a, when he was in uh, IndyCar. As he was with Sarah Fisher in the mm -hmm. beginning, I watched him from there. Um, and so, I've I've always kept an eye on Joseph yeah. and uh, Connor, obviously, because they're the two that frequent the track the sure most. Yeah. Um, so, I yeah, watch them. And then the uh, Christian Rasmussen, he's he's kind of impressed me a lot. No doubt. Um, he's he just moving up like it, it, his his road to Indy has been is everybody's dream. True enough. One yeah. year and every single step. Just keep so, digging, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, listen, good luck in 2024. Thanks for taking some time with us. Yeah, thank you, Rob. It was good it. it was good being here. Awesome. So many unbelievable storylines in the USF Pro Championships presented by Continental Tire. It's obviously an international program, as we know. Drivers coming in from, from different countries around the world, but centered, of course, on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We have two events there throughout uh, the, uh, the month of May, both at IRP and at IMS itself. There are some people in that particular community that are huge. Obviously, Logan Adams in that Dismore family, that longtime family in carding the track, Newcastle Motorsports Park. That's his state, that's his city, and those are gonna hopefully be his racetracks, whether it's on the road course at IMS or on that tight oval at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Logan Adams looking to make his name in history here in the USF Pro Championships. Thank you again for tuning into the show, folks. My name is Rob Howden. Bye for now.